Rebuilding a Bernac Vulcan model steam engine toy, part 27. The new crankshaft and modified crank web are now in place, and the assembly rotates freely as it should. Time to make some proper bearings for the crankshaft using some machined pieces of bronze as a bearing material, which is infinitely better for bearings than brass. To be honest though, for a small toy steam engine like this one, brass bearings with a crankshaft made from stainless steel would work well. I want to take it one or two stages further than that though. I've machined a piece of leaded bronze to the same diameter as the original bearings. And here I'm facing across the front of the piece of bronze bar because it's always good to start with a flat surface before you bring in the centre drill. The video's a bit late today, that's because I've just come back from Leeds after having the fifth of my radiotherapy sessions on my prostate in an attempt to kill the cancer which is currently abiding within it. After five radiotherapy sessions, I actually do still feel okay. And after centre drilling the piece of bronze, I'm using a twist drill to drill a hole quite a long way down it. This twist drill is one imperial size less than 3 16 of an inch. Once I've drilled the hole deep enough, I'm going to use a 3 16 of an inch diameter reamer to ream out the hole so it will be a perfect size with a very good surface finish. In this particular clip I haven't increased the speed using the video editor and now I'm reaming the hole with the lathe in back gear. This is also running in real time. Just in case you don't know, back gear is a set of gears in the headstock that allow you to run the lathe extremely slowly and of course it becomes very powerful. You have to be extremely careful not to get your fingers in the way. After reaming the hole all the way down the center all I have to do is part off the segments that I need. Two for the bearings and one for the spacer. The spacer is a bit thicker than the bearings, so I'm using a ruler just to make sure that I cut it to the right length. Without this spacer in place, the flywheel would rub against the boiler when it was running. And that is something to be avoided at all costs. I cleaned up the bearing bushes and the spacer using some wet or dry sandpaper and now I have a kit of parts. What I'm about to do is fairly unorthodox, but it's going to work for an engine of this size and temperature. Temperature is relative to steam pressure, and believe me, this engine is going to run at a very low pressure. I've coated the bearings with some Friar Lux paint, and here they are in position on the frame, ready to be soft soldered. And to do this, I'm using my Proxon blowtorch. I can highly recommend this blowtorch, it's very good indeed. Unlike a small blowtorch that I have that bursts into flames at regular intervals. Although looking on the bright side, it does keep the hair on the back of my hands at a reasonable length. To help the fryer look solder out, I'm using some electrical solder too. And the part of the crankshaft that's stuck through the bearings is the bit that I'm going to cut off. First though, while it's nice and hot, I need to clean up the bearings using a paintbrush with some water. I would not soft solder bearings onto a steam engine that ran at a higher pressure than this one because temperature is relative to pressure and if I was using a boiler pressure of about 80 pounds per square inch the engine would be far too hot and it would melt the solder and the bearings would fall off. At this stage I'm changing the mounting base bolts for 5BA instead of 4BA. The next part of the job is to apply some Loctite 542 to the steam pipe and screw it into the block at the top of the cylinder. This pipe to the engine block from the boiler still needs a bit more cleaning up. Now it's time to cut the crankshaft to the correct length. I've made a mark with a felt tip pen and I've just chopped it off using my bandsaw. Then I cleaned up and profiled the end using my one inch belt sander. To secure the flywheel to the crankshaft, I'm going to use a small 6BA grub screw. First of all though, I do have to drill a hole in the centre boss and thread it all the way through with a 6BA tap. After doing that, I can fit the grub screw and now the flywheel is securely held to the crankshaft and very unlikely to come off. I intend to pressure test this boiler, but not yet. It's only running at such a ridiculously low pressure, it doesn't need a hydraulic test. I've simply fitted an adapter to the top of the boiler where the safety valve goes and a piece of silicone rubber tubing and my logic says before the boiler blows up the silicone rubber tubing will blow off. 
According to my compressor, there's 10 pounds per square inch going into the boiler, and as soon as I touch the flywheel, off it goes. All I'm doing at the moment is running in the bearings, and it's sounding quite good. There are quite a few black oil spots appearing on the boiler. These are just spinning out of the bearings, and this will stop once it's run in. Now for a bit of slow motion, and running at 10% normal speed, it sounds really good. The design of this engine is a little bit weird. The exhaust comes out of the back of the block and to throttle it you restrict the exhaust. But the trouble is that this means that quite a lot of water appears down the side of the boiler. You can't have everything. In case any viewers are wondering why I fitted a water gauge with a blowdown valve, here is the answer. I've silver soldered a piece of copper pipe to a 3 16 by 40 nut and here I'm tightening the nut onto the blowdown. This has a dual function. It allows me to blow down the water gauge to get rid of any bubbles, but here I've attached a piece of silicone rubber tubing to it, which is connected in turn to a syringe full of water, which means I can pump water into the boiler. I attach the tube, open the valve, pump the water from the syringe into the boiler, and then close the valve and remove the tubing. And that is it for this one. If my voice is sounding a bit different and a bit tired, that's because I got up at five o'clock this morning and yes, I'm fairly tired after the last of my radiotherapy sessions. I keep my fingers crossed that it will be effective. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.